What's good, y'all? Master Sir here. My live reaction to the finale of Tokyo Ghoul Re is in the description below. Or I would say the finale. Because it's coming back in fall, baby. Mm -hmm. I, had no, I didn't even know right when the reaction was over. I went to my phone, hit that tumble, and that one person, that one person, said it's coming back in the fall. Now, only one person says it, it might not be right. But in case it is right, for us to know, for me, probably not. But, let's just say we all know. It says it's coming back, baby, which is good. The Tokyo Ghoul Re has been fired. Now here's the thing. Now in the la in this last episode, there is some things compared to the manga that I have read that could have been a little bit better, which I will touch up on in a second. But overall, here's the thing, man. The last episode, the first season, Tokyo Ghoul, 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 which was hype because Kaneki got that white hair and whooped Jason's ass. But that wasn't really the right direction they were supposed to go in, apparently, compared to the manga. Everything about that was screwed except for the final fight at the end. Now, Tokyo Ghoul Re A, Ru A, we all know that ending was complete trash. So, yes. Now we get Tokyo Ghoul Re out of all the series, follows the manga the closest. The manga is that dope. So you should have done that in the first place. To this ending, even though some parts were a tad bit different, it was really only different in terms of dialogue. Everything that was supposed to happen, happened. Maybe I don't remember like that because, you know, it's been a while since I've read this manga. But... Man, this has been the best finale in the Tokyo Ghoul series so far. So, <laughs> coming up to Tokyo Ghoul Re. Tokyo Ghoul Re is doing its job. Tokyo Ghoul Re is taking it there. Now, we all know the first half of Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 was better than the second half when it came to Rude. So, I don't know what's going to happen in October. But we'll worry about that in October. Right now, we got this greatness in front of us and it's done just that. Now, about the episode itself, I just wanted to get to put that out there. But... Straight up, man. That's how I feel about it. But girl, Ento here. Ento's one of my top characters. You guys gotta understand that about me, alright? I don't know my top characters are different from a lot of people's top characters. Juzo's my favorite character in the series. She was my nigga. And Ento, my... Well, I wanna say she's like my seventh wife. I got this. I'll, I'll tell you it one day. But anyways, straight up, Ento out here trying to be your mama and your wife. <laughs> One second, one second later, I'm gonna adopt you as my child. Second, second after you get cut in half. I love you, fam. Like for real. Episode one of the, se of the second season. Hey, we fucking. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. But anyways, I mean, he did cut into a lower half. Like she, her top half fell off the build. She is alive. I'm just throwing that out there. She ain't dead. So yeah, I know that might be a spoiler to some people, but it's good news to me. And anyways. So, but her whole half was on that building, and Kaneki ate it, so I guess he kind of ate out the book. Anyways, but it tastes good, though. Anyways, good job, Kaneki. <laughs> Kaneki's back, yo. I say, that's done. That's done. So, basically, that black hair done came all the way back. Because someone noticed, apparently on social media, that, that his hair was going more and more black as the episodes went on after, the, you know, uh, the Nutcracker scene. So, yeah. Kaneki's here, y'all. That little white hair Kaneki kid pissed me off, so I'm glad that's over. <laughs> but anyways, man, we all know Kaneki had a trouble pass and all that shit. Kind of, you know, that shit. So, whatever. Ah, he threw Shu off a building and he tried to kill Shu. I'm not happy about that, bro. <laughs> Kane or Karen had her last scene. Basically, she died falling into a rose in her own mind. In reality, she just split her head on the fucking... <laughs> you never know, it's, notice it's those big shots like that. Like ever since the episode one, when Akira punched the hell out of Heisei in that hallway, to a moment like this where Kane fell off the and head first into the building, they don't play the sound effect on there. It's just like, y'all notice that? Just real quick, bam, we out. Even when Kaneki Kine cut up Eto like that, it was just like, there it is. Which is it was kind of weird for me because we just kind of zoomed right quick through that. Like I'm not saying it felt like it was rushed. It's just like, you know. When you was a manga reader and you was going through it, and you see Eto freaking out, all of a sudden she's in love with Kaneki. All of a sudden, then she's licking his eye. Yeah, my, where my manga reader's at? Let's not pretend we wasn't staring at that page for like five minutes. And then she was cut out in half, and then she was following. Yeah, we kind of zoomed right through that in the manga. <laughs> zoomed right through that in the anime, didn't we? <laughs> kind of was like, fuck it. <laughs> Eto got that ass. Well, Eto, this your second L. It's your second L. Come on now. Armor came through and whooped that ass. He did the same to Kaneki, so. But, 
the Al Kanikian came through and whooped your ass, girl. That's why you can't keep taking these L's like this. Damn, girl. Anyways. She okay. Freaking the fuck up. I'm glad she fucked up Washu like that. Fuck Washu, yo. And that's the thing about CGG, bro. Bro, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it right here, straight up. Just, just. I know I keep saying making references to the manga right now, but when I was reading the manga, bro, that was the hardest scene I went through when I was reading that manga. Shiraz's death. That was the hardest scene I went through when I was going that manga, bro. That lot of reading right now no longer exists because that channel got deleted and I had to delete everything off that channel to stop it from being deleted over and over again. But. Ah, uh, damn. That shit was emotional, man. And this anime, dra like, when, when, I, when I'm over here talking about Eto getting cut up in about a couple of seconds, this this thing dragged that part so fucking. Well, I guess it's the, it was really, no offense to Eto, the most significant part of the episode, really. We got Kaniki back. Eto's over here freaking out. Uh, Shirazi's death basically takes the cake. That's basically, the, that's basically the, like, bruh. They dragged that shit off for real. That, that dude all of a sudden lost his hearing, lost his sight. Just freaking out about all the people he's leaving. People just over yelling. Now, there was, that, that's one of the things when I'm talking about comparison with the manga. Cause it was, the dialogue was much different there. Uh, you know, Yurei's cussing himself out, cussing Shirazi out about don't fucking die, you fucking bastard. What the fuck, you don't fucking die on me, you fuck. <laughs> Basically, that's, that's one of the things. But, I mean... From an emotional standpoint, I think the anime probably took that one. Because, like, this is the way it was drawn out. The way it was, you know, actually seeing it happen in real time. Because even in the manga, we're kind of just clicking through pages. You know, you can stay out of pages as long as you want. But in reality, and there it is. In the anime, you just sitting through that whole thing like, God damn. God damn. I would admit this, though. At the end, though, they kind of just zoom right through that funeral. I don't know what the... F well, yes, I do. They kind of just went right through that damn funeral. So, nah. That was that was a big point, but, you know. Kind of did the same with the Christmas party. We haven't seen my boy Juzo in a minute. But anyways, man. Uh, Kuzan. Stay on, though. Because, you know, Eto's dad, basically, she did send... Talk of Rue A fucked it all up. <laughs> And then the root age, it was supposed to show that, well, we we, well, we, we knew enough for episode 11 that Eto kidnapped her dad. She give a fuck about him. So, Eto, with the B100, you had an ass whooping coming, girl. <laughs> but anyway, anyways, anyways. Uh, Kuzin ain't even dead either. I know that's a spoiler, kind of, but, you know, they ain't dead. Him and Eto ain't dead. You know, Kuzin, you know, Yushimoto, you know, the, the old antique of shot. Can you hit up with that line? Why did I say trash like you? Like, who you calling trash? Can't you see? I love you. <laughs> anyway, anyways. Uh, what else I can say about? Damn, it's been eight minutes. Well, I've been talking too much. What else I can say about about re season two? It's only the beginning. <laughs> I say that a lot when this, but it is. It's only the beginning, y'all. Y'all know what kind of series Tokyo Ghoul is right at this point. It's only the beginning, man. So yeah. I will say this much. Remember, Kaniki called Eto by her actual name when she was, well, not her actual name, so to speak, but her author's name. You know, she's the author of that famous book that Kaniki be reading. So, yeah, that's actually a big point. Eto's identity is revealed. Kaniki know who she is. She know who the owl is, basically. She's very familiar with Eto beforehand. Start of season two. Hey, we fucking. <laughs> but anyways, straight up, man. I'm gonna get out of here. You watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Thanks for watching. That root A. I keep calling it root A. That suit. That season. That. <laughs> see, that's the one thing I've been trying to avoid. Cause when I figured out about the season two, I was thinking Tokyo Ghoul Re Root A version. That's why I keep bringing up Rude A. It's that thing in the back of your mind. You think season two don't suck. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Don't fuck this up. You guys have been doing great so far. Don't fuck this up. Studio Perry, you redeemed yourself. Okay?